Hi, I'm Martin Eccles. I am HDB's Executive Butcher. Um, in this video today, I just want to talk to you about a few different things um, with the meat. So we're going to look at some beef, we're going to some lamb, a bit of pork, and then we'll move on to a bit of offal. Um, we'll talk about best ways of utilising these cuts, where some of these cuts come from, and hopefully give you a few tips and techniques on um, how to trim them, how to use a knife, um, bit of knife skills, bit of understanding where some cuts come from and uh, hopefully give you a bit of advice. So first up I want to talk to you about mince and about some of the different cuts. I want to give you a bit of an understanding on where these cuts come from. Talk to you a little bit about the differences with, um, with VL, so visual lanes. These are all Minces that are readily available in all supermarkets um, and the, what they have is they have different variations, different levels of fat. Um, generally this will be displayed on, 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 the, uh, on the packets. So if we look here, this one says 12%, typically less than 12%. This one says typically less than 5%. This one here is typically less than 20%. So that is telling you what the fat level within the minces. So for this one here, this, so it's 95% visual lean, so by, done by the eye, and 5% fat. Obviously, the higher the meat content, the visual lean, then the little bit more expensive than it can be. That's why you tend to get like this one here, a 20% fat tends to be a little bit cheaper. And um, when we look at these, um, one thing I do want to just highlight to you to give you a bit of an idea, a bit something to look for that when you go in to buy them, is that the variations in price. So if we look at um, these two here in particular, they're both 5% fat, um, lean mince steak, lean mince, mince steak again, but there's quite a difference in price. Um, this is a kilo of mince, 489. This one here is 250 grams, and um, this one here actually retails at twice the price of this one almost. So at four pound a kilo difference. So it's something just to look at, um, be aware when you're buying something to look at it. Um, so what I wanted to say is, where does mince come from? So when the carcass comes into the butchers, into the retailers, into the processing plants. Um, these are then deboned, so this tells me that they're having the bones removed. We then get the primal cuts off, so we get the uh, the top side, the silver side, the, the the knuckle. These are then trimmed up to the specification that you see on, on your on your uh, on your on your shelf. Um, and then the cuts that come off of there are then graded so you will get some bigger pieces which are quite lean which will go for a stewing steak the ones that are the smaller ones that are less than that are then graded out and that's where we get our vls for mince from so that's just to give you an idea it's like it's the off cuts shall we say perfectly fine really good to use like nothing wrong with it or anything like that but that's what it is, it's just a smaller cut, so that's better utilisation of the carcass. So when it comes into a butcher, he will get the most money out of the particular cuts. Um, with mince, if you're going to make uh, a, a, a dish with, a, we say, with meatballs or a lasagna or a cottage pie using beef, I would always go for something that is a, a, of a higher meat percentage, so one of these 95 VL minces because when we're actually cooking a product in a, in a dish that fat is going to stay within it so we're not going to let it we're not going to be able to get rid of it if we were making a burger or a kofta for instance then we can get away with using um, something with a little bit of a higher fat content and the reason why I would say that is is that, that at that point we can actually um, Keep the product that's moist so when we're actually cooking it the fat will render out of it it will keep it moist it won't dry it out but because of the method of cooking on a grill on a barbecue then that fat is allowed to actually 
um, escape and get away. Um, if we look at some of the uh, some of the ways that butchers are starting to look at utilising different um, ways of utilising mints and how we can make different products, this is something that um, we do see now that butchers are coming up with. And these are called a, a, a beef truffle, it's just a name that's given to them there. But essentially what it is, it's, it's a men's product. This one's actually coming from a, a, a burger mix. So what, a, a, if you buy a burger. And if we get uh, a little toy like this, butchers have little toys like this, little burger press. We get a burger paper, we put it in here. This is just a burger mix that we put in like I said like that, so it puts that in there, we bring this in and then we push down. The mince I've actually used here, this is actually 100 grams, so the actual mince was 100 grams. And then just take it off gently and it makes us, so we have this um, little dish, little, little, little shape, little mould for it actually put it through and what I've actually done with these ones today just to give you a bit of an idea with this one here I've chopped up some mushrooms a bit of garlic butter put it in the case with this one is a little bit different um, I've chopped up some black pudding we've got some chorizo and I've just grated a bit of gouda cheese on top of it so that's just could go in the oven and be roasted off or oh, in summertime, uh, even on the barbecue, over an indirect cooking method, put them in. Gradually, we'll cook the burger, we'll cook the the shirt. So on this one, the black pudding will heat up, we'll, we'll drop down, we'll, we'll mix together. So it'll give you a nice flavour in that. The cheese come across the top of it. Um, so yeah, that's just different ways of looking at how to utilise a product and, and make something nice and easy to uh, to actually have a, a different meal option. So that's uh, what we've done just looking at mints. We'll just move these out of the way, give yourself a bit of room and then we'll, uh, we'll look at a bit of pork. So when we move on to um, some pork, so we have some pork medallions there and I've got some pork tenderloin. So the tenderloin is actually the the fillet of the animal. So like if you imagine if it was on beef, it would be fillet steak. And the loin and the medallions actually come from the, the loin end of the of the animal. So when they're in situ on the animal, these are, are found around the, the, the lumbar bones, along the vertebrae, along the spinal column. This cut is on the inside and this is on the outside, so that's where the animal sits. This um, is a relatively a muscle that has very little use so this is why it, it's so tender um, and the line is like that this is just for the shape and the, the, the uniformity of the cuts that we do both of these are ideal for stir frying for grilling as a as a, as a steak um, this one here we can do into kebabs we can do it into steaks we can split it and put some stuff in, in it. We could roll it in parma ham and roast it in the oven. So the very, very versatile cuts. Um, I just wanted to give you some sort of idea. This one in particular, I feel, is very under underutilized um, in terms of cost. A little bit more expensive than the medallions, but actually, because it's in a whole piece, it actually allows us to actually. Um, do more with it. I do think that when uh, when they're in the packaging it doesn't really look that uh, as much as appealing as it perhaps could do but actually it's a really really great product um, and what I want to actually do is we'll do a bit of butchery on this one <coughs> and what I want to show is what actually needs to, to what we need to do to it to actually make it um, for what we want to use for what we want to different ways of butchering if we look on here, we have some silver skin, a little bit of fat down here, and then just running down the side here, there's actually what they call 
what they call the chain muscle which actually separates and there's a little bit of fat and a little bit of gristle that runs down that side of it. Um, when we think about trimming um, a product, whether it be this pork fillet, whether it be the pork loin steaks, whether it be a bit of lamb and a bit of beef, what I would always um, advise is that don't grip the knife too hard. Um, don't really grip it really tight because it becomes harder to actually to move. So we want to get that bit of dexterity in our hands um, enables us to trim. If we if we've got like a, a, a loose if we feel like we're loose, like I say we, we've got that manip we can manipulate we can move the knife round. I do feel that there's less chance of you actually having a, an accident and perhaps cutting your fingers. Um, another way when we do start to come to actually um, dice it or cut it into strips, I do feel that if, if you hold your hand similar to this and then what you can do is you can cut down this way and what that actually does is that the, as your knife goes down it follows this flat bit of your fingers here and actually your fingers that stick out there you've no way of cutting them because they are tucked in behind um, that's just the way but the biggest thing is is try to avoid that real where the re people really really grip it overly tight so with the uh, the port tenderloin here what I'm going to do is like I said I'm going to remove this silver skin here bit of fat and the chain muscle so we'll start off on here trim that away there another Thing that I would say is that I have um, a dish at the side so all my trims I can put straight into there so it's something we know like <clears throat> clean as you go so it's just a way of working it just works better it just you clean and um, you're getting less mess so that there's less less mess on your table we will take the chain muscle off where the, the fillet comes and comes down so it narrows down at this side here if we just pull this and it opens up and as you can see we're following a natural seam and it allows me to just follow it through there actually take that away with this bit here trim this bit of fat off there this little bit of meat here would be ideal for stir frying or whatever you're doing for it when we look at the silver skin here the best way to do this is to like I say I will have this hand so the non knife hand tends to go behind the knife and put the knife in just gently under the silver skin and then just move it forward like that so that actually creates a bit of a flap then turn it round from where the bit of flap is there with that little bit of skin silver skin just gently bring the knife in and lift and move it away so very very gently just lifting and moving that away so this is um, the silver skin, this connective tissue, so this is like gristle. So it just needs to be moving, it's something that can be a little bit unpleasant when we're eating. So we've got that bit there, we then do the same to the other bits there. Okay, so we've done that there. Again, turn it round, gently, just working away, working away from it all the time. And as you can see, I'm putting very little pressure on. This piece, this hand here, is pulling the silver skin, the connective tissues back. Again, if you can see, I put my hand at this side of the knife and then I move it that way. So I come there, we then go back and it's just a case of lifting and just pushing it through. So I say it goes into there, into the trims. I've been there, again, my hand goes to the other side of the knife always away from the blade. Look around here, little bit, again working away from the hand. So as you can see there we've, we've taken that silver skin away. What we now think of depending on what meal we want to do, if we look at this here we can cut into, um, into small chunks through once again if we wanted to make a kebab we've got the chunks the beauty with on this we can determine the the, the thickness of the of the cut 
we, we had the line chops, they were cut, the line steaks, they were cut to a specific thickness. This way we can cut them a bit thicker. We can also cut them into little round medallions. So we go through like that. And you'll notice that when I when I cut a steak is that I push away and then bring the knife back to me and come through. So similar to that, so away and then back to and it's there. We can cut these into strips for stir fries. We can gently squash them out, make them a little bit thicker, thinner and a little bit rounder like that. So if we wanted to do like a medallion, we have that there. Put them onto there. <clears throat> we can also, if we wanted to, split this way. We can open it up as um, into like a, a spatchcock product, so it's, it's opened up, it's spatchcocked, it's fanned out. That could be then grilled, it could be marinated, um, we can put on the barbecue, fry it. We've got so many options. If you were going to put a marinade on with it, I would suggest that you put the product into a bag or into a, a tub, put the marinade on and let it uh, marinate in that way. That way you're not creating a, a big mess on your table. So that um, was the, the pork fillet. We'll just quickly just give a quick squirt on the table, just have a bit of a clean. And just through, wipe down, so we're constantly cleaning as we go. So we've got that there so there's no contamination from uh, different species, different proteins. Gently. And when I'm, well, if you notice that when I'm cleaning my knife, the actual blade is on that side. Again, my hands come round this way. We clean it, so it's always away from us. So we're always thinking about how we can do something safely. I would also say that the one thing to, re to watch out for people doing is putting things on top of knives, because if somebody comes along to pick up that product, then they grab into that there. Also, when you come to cleaning knives, never put them in a sink of um, soapy water because you may go away, you come back, and the person then puts their hand in, can't see what's in the sink, and then they can pick this up and, and maybe lead to an accident. So it's just about thinking around, out of the box, and on what um, is going on around you. We. Um, we're going to move on to some uh, some lamb. So we have this here. This is a, a this is a, a leg of lamb, and this is a lamb steak. So sometimes these are called a polo steak because the little bone in the middle is a little round bone, and that probably gets its name from because people associate it with a, with a, with the mint. Um, if we look at this here, this actual chop has three. Um, different meat cuts within it. So this one here, following this same here, is a top side. This one coming down here is the silver side and this is the knuckle. And if you're going to quickly pan fry something, do it relatively quickly, then ideally we would like to get them as a separate muscle because the fibre in each one of these three muscles runs in a different way and that can have an adverse effect on the eating quality of that product. If you're cooking it long and slow, it doesn't have the same effect. So how do we actually get around that? Um, and what I want to actually do with it, with show you is how um, this is actually set up in a, in, a, in a leg of lamb. So this is the leg, this is the shank, which is coming, this is from the, the rear of the animal, from the hind quarter of the animal. So this is coming down into the rear leg. What we talked about the top side, that's this muscle here. Down this side here is the the knuckle and if we turn it over here you can actually just see the outline here this is where the silver side is so what I want to do is actually I want to take these apart into separate muscles and we're going to do that and we're going to follow the seams um, and that enables us to remove that so we can actually produce a product that's going to eat a bit better gives me more options to, to what I can do with it as a, as, a, as a product just here this is where the kneecap is if I just move it, it gently moves and that tells me that that is my area 
where I want to go in with my knife to actually remove the shank. So bring my knife in, it's the gentle jiggle and it comes through and then the shank comes off. So if we see like a, something like a food service outlet or even some ready meals now that you see in, in supermarkets, this is where that product comes from. So this is the shank. I always turn it this way, so where I've taken the shank off, this would always be my way of working. Um, and then I want to go in at this point of the bone, and then just along here, there is a seam, a natural seam that I want to actually get into. So put my knife in, gently, nothing too hard, nothing, nothing not really forcing it in, and that exposes the bone, as you can see into there. So it's actually exposing, exposing the bone there. So. That actually tells me where the natural seam is and then I can just gently with my hands start to open up this as a, as, as a cut. So we're following this through now, can you see how the natural seam is coming through there? Follow it through and then we can take the top side off. We then look here, we have this remaining bone here and a bit of a bone there which is the kneecap so I come in gently follow it across and then slowly follow the bone around on either side it allows me to do that so I can, I can start to pick the bone up and just at the front round underneath and then it allows me to actually follow the bone down round the kneecap with the patella bone and that comes out so that's gone so we have an, I now have a totally boneless product this is the knuckle this is the silver side and if I gently just push my thumb in it starts to open it up into a, another natural seam so we can just follow this through so there went round gently rolling it across so it comes out with the skin so we have uh, the knuckle joint there we then have the silver side which I can then trim up because that has some internal fat um, the difference between internal fat and external fat is that when we actually cook internal fat doesn't actually render down it will stay as, it will stay as fat in a, in a product so ideally it does need to be removed Again, just gently bringing it down, follow it there just to remove this. This is another muscle that sits inside it which was a continuation of this part of the, of the shank there. Behind it is a pocket of fat, within that pocket of fat is uh, one of the glands from the animal so again something that should be removed. Take that bit of excessive fat off there, we can then just remove um, there's a, a connective tissue, a gristle that runs along the side, similar to what we did with the pork. Just gently follow it through and just remove that from that internal part of there. So what I'm actually doing is I'm actually creating a product that has no um, plate waste and it's something that's not going to be uh, pleasant to eat. We'll take that bit of fat off there. Trim a little bit of excessive fat from down the side and then there we have this is uh, the silver side that we talked about I can make that into a small joint if so be I can cut it into steaks the knuckle again can be cut into steaks if you wanted to do it for kebabs if you want to do it for stir fries that can be done there and then we have the top side here which will begin will be cut into steaks just across the top there, there's a bit of silver skin, a bit of uh, connective tissue. We'll remove that as we're going along. Round the top here, a bit of excessive fat, we'll remove that. And what this now enables me to do, because I've taken them off, because when we talked about the, the, the chop, the chop with the, the three different muscles so this these two are the same muscle these two are the same muscle these two are the same muscle but now what we can actually do is we can actually take the 
front end off there. Cut them into steaks and because we've actually removed them I can now cut them in the correct way so that the fibres within each cut I can now cut them across those fibres so the actual end product is actually um, a better eating experience for the consumer for whoever's going to the, the chef the uh, the aspiring chef that's going to be cooking them so they're setting off that way if we want to put a marinade on them we can do again because we've exposed them in the marinade penetrates it a little bit better with the the knuckle we can make nice lean scallops like a smaller like again a smaller leaner steak if we want to do stir fry kebabs whatever they can be done from that product there and then if we look at the, the silver side we'll cut it in half so if I wanted to make a small small roast small joint they can become out of that there's something that's going to cook in something this size probably 400 grams is going to cook in about 30 40 minutes so it's something that we're making it as a quicker cook properly quicker cook proposition so that's looking at the leg of lamb um, in a different way to how we can do it we'll uh, just pop these over here and finally I wanted to um, just talk to you about about kidney um, an awful um, so what I've got for you here I've got you so this is a lamb's kidney um, a lamb's kidney is, is smaller it's smooth this if I was going to do use a kidney this one I would use for a grilling um, if you want to do a quick fried pan fried kidneys grilled kidneys this will be the one I would use I just wanted to show you that this comes from here so this is encased in fat so this is like internal fat again we talked about the internal fat on the leg of lamb this again is something that protects the kidney within the animal and this needs to be removed just to give you an idea of what it's like each kidney would be have a surrounding of fat it's just something that within the animals to to protect it so we're removing fat off that's just to give you an idea what that is this is a pig's kidney similar in in shape um, and smooth to give you some sort of idea on the differences so lambs and pigs kidneys tend to be the same whereas uh, this is a full ox kidney and as you can see again where the fat comes in but with the with the beef kidney it's more into like um, into it's it's more of a, a bobbly um, shape and effect so when you see a kidney in a, in a counter um, it, whether that be in a butcher's shop or whether that's in a, a supermarket um, you tend to get only get really get lamb's kidneys in a supermarket beef kidney will be diced same with uh, with pig's kidneys really um, ideal for making a beef stew casserole steak kidney pie the the beef kidney is great for doing that again if I wanted to make something that's with a fried or a grilled kidney and I would use a lamb's kidney because um, they're not quite as strong in flavour and texture the one thing I will say that you do need to do is you do need to remove this core there's two ways of doing that I'll show you show you on either one there's one way is where we could put our hand on to hold it down and run my knife across and that opens it up and exposes that core so we can stay there so we can actually go in and actually remove some of that core from there so the, when I say core it's like a, the vein and, and there's a bit of fat that sits in there so if you're going to slice them and pan fry them I do them that way if you're going to do them whole just gently push your knife in down turn it over again fingers behind the knife down there and then remove that and that goes into the bin so there we are so we have beef kidney pig's kidneys and lamb's kidneys um, and that's the end of my video I just turn it up and say, say goodbye so hopefully that's been good for you hope you've uh, found it interesting and, and useful and uh, hopefully talk to you soon thank you bye bye